Hi everyone, welcome back to the last day of practice for the Disc Golf Ballet Players Tour, week two. This week, at this time, we're jumping into Northern Breeze. I feel pretty confident on my lines on most of Northern Breeze, so this one will probably be a little bit quicker. This is an accurate roll harp, accurate sticky harp works just the same. Down to the right, and with a one wind, I'm doing about a half disc of Anheuser. With a two wind, I'll go a little bit more. And this should hit the ice slide up here and snuggle up next to the basket. I'm taking some iteration of that on every wind coming in here. Going into hole two, this will actually struggle with this a little bit lately. I like the accurate glide hope. It's a matter of whether I can hit that line right. And I think that should do it. I'm not trying to go too deep. I want to be slowed down a lot. This is probably the worst case scenario that can happen there. 60 feet. Let's see if I can avoid this hillside. I can. So able to get it there. There's a lot of plays wide around the right side or taking a fuse up the gut. I really like the hope slows down a lot before it gets there. For me, it's just a matter of whether I get it there far enough. A little bit of rock bounce around. That's okay. Yeah, this is the goal to end up right around this area and about a 60 foot throw in. So that's what I'll be doing for hole two in the player's tour. Let's move on to hole three. I'm not sure if I'm going to get a chance to do commentary and post rounds for the actual player tour itself. I got a busier weekend this weekend. So hopefully these uh, practice rounds, prep rounds, are enough to satisfy you guys who are looking for the content here. But I'm going to take an accurate roll sapphire for hole three and just get it up the gut here. Aim intentionally way left of the basket. I don't even care. I hit a little bit of trees coming in there. And this throw in uphill. It's slightly uphill. I add about 10 feet of power. So with the 80, I'm throwing at 90 feet of power. But with the two headwind, I'm going to back that off to 70 feet of power again. I always work in 10 foot increments. Figuring out my power is just easier to work it down that way. Figure out how many increments uphill you're throwing. That's just from practice and then adjust with the wind accordingly, a headwind. I ignore the one wind, and I take off 10 feet of power for each wind if it's two, three, or four. If it's a tailwind, then I'm taking off one less. So with a two tailwind, I'm taking off just 10 feet of power. A three tailwind, taking off 20 feet of power. The tailwind has that a little bit higher. It's not really a lift, but it's pushing the disc faster to the basket, and but not quite as much as that headwind. All right, this one is the Accurate Glide Sapphire down low to the left. See the middle chevron where the rock meets the tree? And I'm typically about a third a disc of hyzer, but with that two wind that's pushing me here from right to left, I'm actually going to go a slight little bit of anhyzer on this disc. Looks like I needed to get more. I wanted to get to the right. Hitting some trees there is okay. A good chance to bounce around. That's a little further out than I like for a throw. So let me practice that one again. Looks like I might even need to go a half disc of Anheuser for that wind. Yeah, that works out better. This is a good area to be aiming for. A little bit of tree obstruction. That's okay. I'm going to go pier 80 feet with the two wind pushing right to left. It's going to lift me a little bit, so I'll go about 60 feet of power. Oh, need to go a little bit more. Let's practice that one up again. Do a little bit more than that 60 power. There we go. I'm gonna try that one again. Want to make sure I can get that birdie coming in the pro tour, or the player's tour rather. This two left to right is a little bit nicer. Come down. This is looking better, I think. Oh, it's a tight line. I don't mind hitting the trees there a bit. End up in the same spot. I do want to re-throw that, hopefully show you guys a little bit more of a pure line through here. This is perfect. I like hitting that tree. Not that tree. Oh, this is giving me a little more trouble than I thought it was going to. Let's see if I can show you another one there. A little bit more hyzer. I know there's a good line here with the like like captain that I used to take. That's more ideal, what I'm actually going for. It's just a matter of figuring out the hyzer and getting it to work uh, correctly for you. I'm going to try like my paradigm coming through because I used to try the captain coming up the gap. Let's see if that paradigm is a little more consistent for me. Usually I like the idea of using the accurate disc in the sapphire whenever I can. 
But if I can come straighter, oh, okay, that's learning like light paradigm. Not as much turn as the captain. Try a couple more here before I get get you guys too bored. Figure out what I'm gonna do in here. I think this. Oh, that's kind of a beauty. Or not. <laughs> well, clearly I'm gonna have a lot more work to do on this hole. I think if I don't have anything figured out prior to going into the player store. I'll probably take that sapphire line because I know it best. Uh, there's the risk there, potentially going OB. It didn't, so maybe one more to build a little confidence, hopefully going into this player's tour. I'm take that accurate glide sapphire. This should be the line that works most of the time for me. Side left, aim down, give it that hyzer. There we go. That's actually ideal for what I'm looking for and what I mostly do. Maybe it's the pressure of making a video for you guys that was making me forget those angles a little bit. Let's move on to hole five here. Hole five, we're coming steep up here and just trying to hit that gap. So I slide left and I aim the top chevron right on this branch. You can kind of see a branch there under the top chevron and then just straight pull back to get me through that gap. I like to go glide skip to get a little more forgiveness if I hit some trees. Um, I'm not ace running this. You guys have seen Aaron Christian's ace run on it. Uh, that's a little more wild than I'm willing to do for an event where every stroke is mattering, especially because if I hit a tree with an ace run there, I have a good chance of not making that throw, and I'm pretty bad at this throw in. Here's a three wins. Glad I get to something a little bit different. So my one wind aim point was up here. Three wind, on some holes I'll adjust the hyzer angle for it. For this hole I'm just more comfortable adjusting downward to co combat that three wind. And aim it straight through here. Oh, got lucky there, I wanted to get a little further up. Let's make sure I can get that figured out. Maybe down and a little bit of anhyzer would be the best play here. Okay. Well, it is a tricky wind. I'm not too worried about it. Tricky winds, it's it's great if you can get them in these big events. But if you can't, a lot of people aren't also. If I do end up down that hill, my goal for making that throw in or my understanding, my calculations for making that throw in, as I aim at the top of that basket, let me see if I can show you one. Try and get a bad throw up there. Just take the musket. Yep. So I'm aiming a little bit higher on the basket. Oh, I need to get down the hill a bit. I'm not going to putt. I'm going to aim a little bit higher on the basket and add about 20 feet of power. So this aiming up here instead of my typical aim point here. A bit to the right because it's going to hyzer out going uphill. And for that 70, I'm going to throw it 90. Let's see if that works out. Nope. Aim too high. Yeah, well... I'm not going to spend too much time here because like I was saying, I'm really not great at this throw-in myself, so I need to not add any power. So don't take advice from me that throw-in. That's just what I'm working on if I get there. It's a hope and nice if I can save that, but I'm expecting par if I miss that drive. This is an ace run hole every time. Slide left, put the tip of that chevron, the bottom chevron on the tip of that rock, and with a one wind, the pullback is here, but with that three wind pushing it, I'm going to try and counteract that a bit more and try to get a good line coming in. Uh, ace runs, you know, nice if you get it. That has never happened before. I'll have to figure that out. So maybe with that 3 one pushing, I'm actually just going accurate roll sapphire. Yeah, I think that's the play, the 3 one pushing. It's going to go accurate roll next time. And then you're here for usually a reasonable short throwing. See if I can get a one win to show you something a little bit better than with the accurate glide sapphire did the first time. <laughs> Three wind pushing again. But I think that is not pushing me forward as much, so I'm going to keep accurate glide and get it way out here to the left. And could have even given a little bit more to have that ace run. There's the back of the green here, 90 feet. Three right to left, I'm going about 60 power. There we go. Adjust for that left right a little bit. Let's try just one more time. See if we can get that one win to show you. If not, I'm just going to go over this and move on. Two win. I can work with a two win. Slide left. 
Aim here instead of that Anheuser. I'm going straight pull back into two wind. Yeah, has a good run at it. That was close. I'm I'm happy getting safe here. The ace is awesome. I did manage to get the ace in Global League. I had the last week Global League, I think, had this one. I managed to get the ace there, so that was cool. Okay, hole seven in a one wind, default aim, accurate glide sapphire, throw it straight. This is about setting up the shot. This hole after the T shot is about scrambling the second shot. So if you try to minimize the amount of scramble, you're in a good position. And I'm taking glide skip paradigm, getting up high over, you can see where the top chevron's pointing at this bush. You gotta make sure you clear the top of that bush. And we have enough Anheuser to get wide around that corner. And then you should kind of filter down for a reasonable throw in. Would have been good to be a little bit wider there, but this is not bad. 99 foot throw in, a little bit downhill. I'm gonna throw it about 80. Yeah, I got lazy not waiting for the wobble. I needed that to wobble to the right, but I wanted to move this uh, video forward a bit there. Let's tap this in. Let's try one more time getting through this hole. There's definitely a line if you want to get more aggressive going up the gut, uh, throwing a, a light glide paradigm or your light glide turn driver and to the right there. But if I have a one wind especially, I want to take that default aim sapphire and end up in the opening here. Here's a good look, plenty wide open to get a big stalling glide skip paradigm or your flippy skippy drivers I like to call them, wide around there and then filtering down for the good look at that birdie. Of course, tough winds make it tougher if you have a hard, uh, see a hard left to right wind. You can see the laziness of a video. Uh, if you see the hard right to left wind, that might push you too far. So you, that's when I might consider going to get up the straight gap instead of taking the sapphire to open or going something like a musket. But most of the time, I'm taking that sapphire off the left side here. All right, this one my play depends on the wind. This left to right wind is an accurate roll sapphire up this right gap. Even a little bit of cabbage would have been nice to get it all closer. Let's practice that one again. Maybe a little bit of hyzer on that one, so I missed that first tree. There you go. You miss those trees, you're up there. If you end up short, that's just, it's layup. Don't mess around with the possibility of going deep off the back end. I gotta really take a lot of power off this one. Downhill and that headwind. Yes, yeah, so you miss short. Lay up for the par. Don't don't take the risk of making that worse. Let me see if I can see a right to left. Perfect. Right to left wind. I'm taking the accurate glide sapphire and hit in this gap a bit lower over here. And you use a pretty forgiving bounce over to give you a look at the basket. I, I don't like to fight against the wind, pushing me into the middle gap there. That's why I choose the way that the wind is going. So if it's a left to right wind or a neutral wind, accurate roll sapphire to the right. If it's a right to left wind, that's accurate glide sapphire to the left. Hole nine, this trick is don't get too close to the sides. I slide right and put the top chevron on top of that corner of the house and a full disc of hyzer. What I mean by don't get left or right is you got to be right on this walkway when you're sliding in. If you're left or right, there's a lot of little ramps there that'll kick your disc up into the air and have you jumping long OB. So you got to get some practice on that one, figuring out the aim and adjustment for the different winds. I'll, I'll do a couple more, see if we can get anything a little bit different to show you. Going in this two wind left to right, it's just a matter of a little bit less hyzer on it. I'll let the wind do more of the work. This might have still been a little bit too much hyzer. Let's see if it's going to show you what I was talking about. Yep, skipping up in the air. Okay, got lucky. It wasn't bad enough, but the snow can really ramp it up into the air quickly. Guys, well, this wraps up my day-by-day -day prep for Disc Golf Valley Players Tour Week 2. You got a, a new course each day, seeing me play it through, and hear my thoughts and risk analysis for each of the holes that I'm working towards, or working through, we're all going to be working through this weekend. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see differently of these or anything that would help you more. But if not, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and stay bogey-free.